our next guest guest uh, but before that i i would like to uh, acknowledge the presence of some of the um, renowned surgeons in the uh, att uh, attendees today one of them is dr louis mercury please uh, uh, accept my heartfelt uh, heartfelt welcome sir thank you so much for being here with us today so my next guest for today evening is uh, dr florencio monje and uh, dr monje may, may we have you please over the screen yes hello it is fine the, the screen monje yes. yes yes can you see uh, the screen yes sir we can see thank you so much It's an absolute pleasure to have Dr. Florencio Monje with us today. He, uh, besides the fact that he's a renowned oral and maxillofacial surgeon from ba uh, Bada Badajoz, uh, Spain, professor of surgery, Department of uh, Medical School, Badajoz, Spain, he's a national prize on. He has won national prize on research of pain 2014. He's, a, he's been president of. Spanish Society of Oral and Maxillofacial Surgeons in the year 2019 to currently is holding the presidentship until 2023 and he has held various positions he has authored several textbooks but some some of the pertinent points that i have really enjoyed knowing about dr florencio has been uh, when i was going through his short uh, short interview on masking the surgeon what i have realized that uh, this man uh, when asked what fascinates him about the endoscopic surgery his answer was that he is able to he is able to see the longing of human mind through endoscopic surgeries we are able to see the longing of a human mind and what is far away he, the human mind wants to see close what is very close he wants to see big and above all what he wants to see is behind the closed solid bodies and that is his motivation to get into the arthroscopic surgery there's no other better person in this world who can talk to us about the mri arthroscopy as dr florencio monje so um, thank you so much dr monje for being here with us okay thank you very much for your kind presentation yeah. um for me it's a great honor to be here thank you very much for the invitation of taranji and for me it's a great honor Uh, to share the podium with Darpa, excellent, excellent uh, lecture, Darpa, and obviously with my dear friend, my English friend Andrew Sidebottom. This is uh, my city. This is my my country, Spain. You know, it's in the southwest of Europe, and this is my city. My city is located in, in a small city. located in the southwest of Spain I am in uh, very close to Portugal in fact my grandfather was portuguese um first of all sorry because i can hear obviously darpan and taranji and obviously andrew with a very native english and i am a survival english and please apologize for some mistake in relation with the language The, the first uh, i have to say the essence of the curiosity of the human being is to see what is very far very close what is very close very large and what is more fascinating is to see what uh, is behind the solid bodies this is philip bosini is a young german army sergeant who was frustrated by trying to locate pellets in his patient it used to tube sang a candle to visualize the inside of the bladder this was a starting point of the endoscope we developed the uh, lecture through different questions and the first question is what about the minimally invasive surgery and why is other medical armamentarium because why is important the view through arthroscopy in temporomandibular joint three real reasons for the development of temporomandibular joint arthroscopy first one is the arthroscopy is a technique that on one hand bring us close to the knowledge of the physiopathology of the joint and essentially what is known as the temporomandibular joint 
internal derangement. Second, till late 1980s, we had several radiographic proofs that showed more emphasis to analyze heart or bone tissues. And we need also to explore soft tissues and it is getting uh, by the exploration with arthroscopy. And the third cause to the development of the arthroscopy is it seems logical and reasonable that if large joints already receive minimally invasive surgery, the joint as small as the temporomandibular joint should justifiably undergo also minimally invasive surgery. The second question is how do it, how do it the minimally invasive surgery? To enter the joint, uh, we need a system of trocars and cannulas. They are necessary. The cannulas are tubes into which the trocars, optics, and surgical instruments are inserted. They are at least 0.1 millimeter larger than the diameter of the arthroscope to permit the entry of linear lactate solution into the joint. And they are marked every five millimeters to indicate the depth. The camera, generally high definition camera connected to the optics. It's important for the camera not to be voluminous to facilitate handling. And this is the arthroscope or the lens. This is the most delicate part of usually has a rod of five centimeters long. They usually have a diameter around two millimeters between 1.7 and 2.7 millimeters. And the most important is uh, the angle of inclination is 30 degrees. This is theoretical five approaches, two superior, two inferior, one endowral. Theoretically, the two inferior approaches are prohibited, are forbidden for possible damage to the uh, condylar cartilage. And three marks can be made in relation with the most famous line. As mentioned, the, the lecturer before, DARPAM, is uh, the most uh, famous line is the hollow line from external uh, cantus to tragus. And these three marks can be made in relation with this line. These three points in relation with this line and these three points roughly delineate the outline of the glenoid fossa and the articular eminence. The puncture site was located by manipulating the mandible and the inferior. First, we need an arthrocentesis to distend the joint. When we are inside of the joint, we put two cc and we note that the plunger moved back. The puncture with a cannula and sharp trocar with no leading of a skin incision is made into the posterior cess. Once inside of the joint, we put the arthroscope and we First, we need an outflow needle in order to examine the upper compartment. This is the most famous classification in relation with the difficulty of uh, technique in arthroscopy. Level one is simple puncture. Level two, double puncture only by laces and lavage or biopsy. And level three is uh, myotomy, capsulotomy, and discopacy, different sutures. But the common point to all types of arthroscopy is the diagnostic arthroscopy. The upper compartment is examined from the posterior area through the intermediate zone to the anterior region. We can see five findings, difficult to appreciate on the MRI, except the roofing. The roofing is a very uh, sophisticated term in relation with the anterior displacement. If you see the, below the eminence, these are left temporomandibular joint, both of them. If you see below the eminence, a vascular structure, a vascular structure is this 100% of roofing, normal situation. However, if you see below the eminence, one vascularized structure, this is posterior ligament. This is a bilaminar sound. And for this reason, that means that the, this is in the anterior position. This is 0% of roofing, and is uh, equal to anterior displacement without reduction. Another in the sign of anterior displacement is retrodiscal tissue redundancy that in some way indicates that the disc has moved back from a more forward position 
to a more physiological position during the initial maneuvers of hypersupplation. The name is also accordion elongation. And you see, this is anterior medial displacement. As you see, uh, this is posterior ligament, and this is the border between the disc and the posterior ligament. And that means that uh, the disc is displaced in anterior and medial direction. Synovitis. Mild synovitis, increase of the number of vessels. Moderate synovitis, increase the diameter of vessels. And severe synovitis is hemorrhage, a spontaneous hemorrhage for in the synovit synovitis area. Synovitis in the anterior compartment, you see, is important. And two other forms of synovitis, the patchy, the patchy is uh, vascular spots in relation with very chronic cases, is uh, typical of patients with uh, several splints and very chronic internal derangement, hypertrophic, is in relation with connective tissues disease, such as uh, lupus, such as rheumatoid arthritis. Additions. This is, on your left side, is the most elemental form of additions. It's fibrous additions. In your left side, your right side, fibrosinoidal addition. Fibrosinoidal addition is addition covered by the synovial tissues. And finally, this is a cell the wall. This fibrous addition run transversely through the joint from medial to lateral position, compartmentalizing the upper compartment. We can classify the, the additions following this classification into grades one to four based on the main index of shape, size, and location of additions, besides temporal mandibular joint function. The index is progressive and it could be in relation with the time of temporal mandibular joint and the patient's age. This is a chondromalacia, the palpator chondromalacia one is uh, the palpator lips phobia with the pressure of the edematous cartilaginous tissue. Farrow, chondromalacia type two, breakage of the collagen fiber situated in the deep uh, channels. This is fibrillation, chondromalacia type three, breakage of collagen fibers, both in depth and superficially. And chondromalacia type uh, four is the exposure of the subchondral bone, the cartilage disappears. This is this perforation is one of the most spectacular finding in temporal mandibular joint internal derangement. In any part of this, but is generally found in the retrodiscal area, but you can see also in the medial part or in the central part. Polyps, isolated polyps in your left side or polyps in relation with some perforation. You see the perforation and you can see the polyps. But we can some, sometimes unexpected findings. For instance, this patient is uh, in MRI with uh, non-characteristic uh, uh, problems in the disc and you can see is the presence of gross calcium in the position within the disc of posterior or bilaminar cell. This is chondrocalcinosis. The third question is it gold standard, the promandibular joint disorder diagnosis? We can forget we explore the upper compartment and we explore the more internal part of the upper compartment. Two interesting papers. The first is Lidberg and cadavers. You see the specificity is higher than sensitivity. And the other, um, Paper is Sanidakis and side button. Also in live patients, false negatives are superior to false positive. And for this reason, a certain risk of underdiagnosis in the diagnosis of temporal mandibular joint arthroscopy. But what about the lower space? Because theoretically, I mentioned before, is forbidden, but arthroscopy of the lower compartment is not advisable, but by mistake, sometimes we reach the lower compartment 
and we can see additions, innovatives, and we need further prospective control study in which arthroscopy of the inferior compartment is routinely performed. This is historical papers appreciated that the patients improved temporomandibular joint symptoms after diagnostic arthroscopy because of washing the joint and moving through the articular surfaces. Different techniques by using the normal material for orthopedic surgery in the big joints adapted to these small joints. We develop capsular release, we develop synovial coagulation, chondroplasty, discoplasty, rotary mechanical shaver. What about the therapeutic indication? It's funny because in 31 years, don't move the indication of therapeutic arthroscopy. Internal arrangement, mainly a stage two, four of, uh, two, three or four. Degenerative joint disease, probably with less chance of success. Synovitis, painful hypermobility and hypermobility caused by additions. We could classify the techniques in three main groups. Lysis and lavage, the most popular and easy method. These repositioning techniques and others that we could add to previously mentioned techniques. We go to the lysis and lavage, and according to Sanders and Murakami described the treatment of close lock, employing a lysis and lavage as a technique to sweep surface additions in the superior joint space, where the goal is to increase this mobility. Two examples of triangulation is wrist and knee. Respectfully speaking, they are subcutaneous joints and very flat joints. It's very easy, this kind, respectfully speaking, is very easy, this uh, uh, arthroscopy. But in the temporomandibular joint, we face with two problems, very difficult, makes very difficult this technique. Two compartments separated by the disc and the dumb eminence. The insertion of the second cannula could be made several ways. We prefer the simple geometric principle of triangulation. After the diagnostic arthroscopy has been completed, or the cannula with a sharp and blunt obturator is inserted in an anterolateral point at medial direction. Palpation hooks, uh, palpation proofs, and forceps were used to cut fibers in additions. There was a lot of disagreement among the surgeons as to the significance of these additions, but Interarticular additions are not as prevalent as was originally thought, but also, according to Sun, you know, is different percentage of uh, additions. Our department and Sun 23, 28, and Murakami 21. Different sensitivity, no, different stages to be operated. Probably Murakami operate, uh, operates uh, later stages and our team operate early stages. But one important, the most important number of uh, additions in our experience is located in the anterior compartment. The anterior compartment of the upper compartment. Why? Probably because it's located on the most inferior side of the upper joint space, where the accumulation of inflammatory debris may to contribute to the increased formations of additions. We prefer move from lateral in the license lavage with two approaches to anterior recess to the posterior recess. In this case, we remove by forceps, by palpator on your right side, or with the scissors. This is the final appearance of the patients after remove all the instruments. Or the common point to all types of arthroscopy refers to physiotherapy. Physiotherapy is advisable, even mandatory, as soon as possible. And the fourth question is, lysis and lavage, does it really work? What is the mechanism behind? Because generally speaking, the problem literature lacks of studies with high evidence. We need systematic reviews. We have systematic reviews, reviews but we miss randomized control trials and multi-center studies. But arthroscopy lysis and lavage has an effective treatment for temporomandibular joint disorders 
refractory conservative treatments performed, short and long-term outcomes of arthroscopic surgery has been described in numerous reports. According to the authors consulted, the clinical effectiveness ranged from 73 to 92%. But according to the author consulted, long-term results more than three, five years, you see the clinical effectiveness range from 77 to 88 percent. What is the best stage to be successful in the lysis and lavage? In the superior part of your slide, a small cap. You see, if he compared small cap, uh, find no correlation between uh, uh, arthroscopic findings and clinical uh, signs and uh, clinical results, result the follow-up in the uh, arthroscopy. I mean, no different stages to be successful. All stages be successful. However, a met and side bottom and a boot and jahalu states that the most successful group uh, in the life of is weakest two or weakest three. However, in our experience in a paper published many, many years ago, patients classified as Wilkes stage four presenting chronic close lock on the temporal mandibular joint had the highest degree in pain and the highest increase in mouth opening among the stages, thus confirming this patient as the best candidates for arthroscopy. What is the mechanism behind? This is a classic um, paper in the left side. You see Moses, 90% of the success, however, 90% with anterior displacement of the disc one year after the arthroscopy. This is Onuki, suggests that arthroscopy surgery does not necessarily improve displacement and deformity of the disc. Moreover, postoperative MRI revealed more mobile disc in the successful group than in the unsuccessful group. Universal mechanism, whatever the joint, whatever the arthroscopy, is the eye of this section. Five mechanisms could be considered. The first is removal of chemical mediators. Although inflammation provokes pain, there are other possible causes, such as the release of sometimes of mediators that do not necessarily associated with arthroscopic signs of inflammation. The manipulation of arthroscopy allows translation of this along the eminence. The surgeon, maxillary facial surgeon, are experts on the innervation. Finally, we suggest that our modeling of the posterior disattachment to see this, in other words, metaplasia. But the other fit factor is an intriguing factor. The placebo effect is a pervasive medical phenomenon and is thought to be part of the response to any active medical intervention. As you see on this slide, in the superior part, the periarticular infiltration improved in some patients some intraarticular symptoms. And in the group of Dimitrulis, normal arthroscopy runs, some of them runs very well with respect to intraarticular uh, symptoms. The positive efforts of the doctor presence and personality, plus the patient's belief in the efficacy of the treatment are very important, but you can trust only in the placebo effect. This finding may be compatible with our study and the research of other authors where we find an appreciable percentage of anterior displacement. The 22% of the residents of duty in my hospital, they are called for MRI and 22% is with anterior displacement with or without reduction, but without any kind of symptomatology. This is a cell book. This is uh, sometimes you win and sometimes you lose or better learn. The good way to learn is the identification of people with very bad characteristics to improve. And you see the different characteristics of bad prognosis depending on different authors. Reduce initial interval opening, younger age group, advanced severity of conditions, present of psychiatric morbidities, high separate global pain, high uh, bilateral procedures, 
presence of bilateral masticatory muscle tenderness and concurrent use of benzodiazepine. Our perception is that easy and simple approach with a learning curve relatively short and simple. It improves patient's pain and thus increase patient satisfaction. Otherwise, it's better than nothing. The fifth question, orthothesis or lysis and lavage? In the majority of this paper, one of them is random or the not random, reveal a statistically difference, significant difference in favor of arthroscopy with respect to pain and mainly internal opening. These results may be attributed to the efficacy of arthroscopy in releasing the negative pressure, releasing additions, widening the narrow joint space. This is one of the most famous and the last meta-analysis in relation with a comparison between arthroscopy and arthrocentesis. Arthroscopy lysis and lavage was found to have superior efficacy in improving intraoral opening and reducing pain when compared to arthrocentesis. However, the current meta-analysis is incomplete due to the paucity of the good quality studies but we prefer arthroscopy because it's a diagnostic tool and also we can perform lysis and lavage or whatever other procedure as uh, the next procedure is electrocoagulation. In electrocoagulation, firstly, I have to say we need more specific but surgical material for these advanced techniques to theoretical reposition of this. We need electrosurgery, and Tarro was the first author, talks about electrosurgery. It refers to the use of monopolar cutting and bipolar coagulating in different maneuvers in the field of arthroscopy. This is the concept. We firstly tried the anterior release of the lateral trigoid muscle. The procedure involves electrocautery of the medial capsule and lateral trigoid muscle. And the theoretical purpose of this uh, posterior coagulation is to promote a scarring of the tissues to prevent this displacement or even to favor theoretical reposition. This is the lateral pterygoid muscle, lateral pterygoid muscle, the upper belly of the lateral pterygoid muscle, the myotomy, and we get normal or move back in the position of this. Where is the region? Where is the area? to perform capsulotomy and myotomy, the most internal part, the most anterior part, and the most internal part of the upper compartment. We can use knife, as you see many, many years ago, be careful with the MRH. We can use uh, a scissors, but the case must be taken with the MRH and time-consuming techniques. This is the appearance uh, performing um, uh, arthroscopy by two approaches in the posterior, the arthroscope in the anterior, the terminal of the coblation, because we use actually, we use uh, currently the coblation. Coblation is a joint of two words called agablation. Uh, we get two purposes with the radio frequency. First, more came in relation with the treated soft tissues, and radio frequency provides to you accuracy. You see this is a capsulotomy. This is the right joint, the anterior part. You see the capsulotomy. In the same case, you see the superficial myotomy. Not very deep myotomy because we have a certain risk of injury of the masseteric nerve. In summary, once again, myotomy, mobilization of the disease, move back the disc, and finally, electrocoagulation of the posterior attachment, electrocoagulation of the posterior ligament of retrodiscal area. You see precoagulation areas, posterior ligament, procedure with one terminal of radio frequency, and this is the final of the posterior attachment of coagulation. This is the final appearance of the patients after remove all the instruments or the common point to all types of arthroscopy refers to physiotherapy. Physiotherapy is advisable, even mandatory as soon as possible 
is very, very important the fission therapy. Much literature regarding the radio frequency and electroregulation in knee and shoulder arthroscopy. Nonetheless, there is a still a scarcity for the usefulness of them in temporal mandibular joint. Not many papers are available on this technique. Chose Gross in 1996 indicate subjective improvement in 71 of patients and Kanayama 92%. And the same view of lysis and lavage, what is the mechanism behind the electroregulation? Do you remember the mechanism about the lysis and lavage? Probably more emphasis in this mobilization because we perform myotomy of the lateral trigoid muscle and we get more mobilization of the disc, but more denervation because anterior disc release by a myotome may also reduce the number of these nerve fibers. And also the electroregulation of the posterior or bilateral zone can cause the innovation. What about the indications of electroregulation? The first one, minimal disc deformity and length of the disc close to normal. I show you the experience presented many, many years ago is uh, about 123 cases, 9% of the patients showed poor results. What happened in relation with the MRI two years after the of uh, electroregulation? You see that 60% uh, of the anterior displacement with reduction recovered the normal position. However, 90% of the anterior displacement without reduction continue in the anterior position, despite the improvement in clinical results. You can see one typical case with seven years follow-up, and you can see how the disease is moved and is placed in very normal position. Good evolution of pain, but this decreased a little bit later. In lysis and lavage, the pain decreased one month after the arthroscopy. However, in an electrocoagulation, uh, three to six months, and also in the maximum oral opening, three to six months, the patient recover the normal opening. Synovitis is an effective weapon to erase synovial inflammation. Why we can face against the synovitis? Because hypervascularization and synovitis is hypervascularization can cause release of inflammatory mediators in relation with degenerative changes in fibro cartilage. And also hypertrophic tissue is an effective weapon against hypertrophic tissue. This is a case with the body in synovial membrane. With the application of plasma sprayer, we get, we reduce the volume of these uh, solid bodies. If we reduce the volume of solid bodies, we can uh, remove the solid bodies through the arthroscope, as you can see. Um, the other indication is to increase the metaplasia because you know that the metaplasia is a magic word for the maxillosurgeon, maxillosurgeon, um, maxillofacial surgeon because give us explanation to something unexplicable. And we move to the controversial and sophisticated disc suturing techniques. We want to mimic this uh, open discopexy, but perform endoscopically. Theoretically, it's advisable, therefore, to stabilize the disc with a suturing technique to obtain a more predictable results. As you can observe, a number of techniques, more or less complex, have been devised for this purpose. This was the first suturing technique 31 years ago. It's a blind technique without endoscopic control, completely blind. It's a homage to pioneer surgeon Alan Tarr. We perform normally this uh, um, technique, is McCain Israel. We need uh, three approaches posterior, uh, and arthroscope, anterior different instruments, and we need a middle inferior, as you can see in this uh, needle. 
A 20 gauge needle is also inserted at the vector point to point as shown and penetrates approximately to contact the lateral pole of the condyle. The needle passes into the superior joint space. Uh, the next is, uh, you know, the, the suture inside of the of the uh, arthroscope or the avocat. Sorry, we move uh, the arthroscope to the anterior approach, the forceps in the posterior approach, with the forceps. We normally remove uh, the the suture. As you can see. And um, finally, one subcutaneous incision, one dissection, and we tie both ends in this incision, theoretically fixing in the most lateral and posterior part of the joint. It's a difficult uh, uh, technique. For this reason, we wanted to obtain an easy method of suturing normal arthroscopy, <coughs> two approaches. You can see capsulotomy, you see, capsulotomy and very superficial myotomy. The drawing in the pits are fully inflated intraticular balloon through the second cannula after anterior myotomy for helping to keep in a more posterior position of the disc. We get a puncture by endoral approach the avocat has a forceps nylon suture inside. You can see how we take the suture with a forceps through the anterolateral approach. The suture passes from auditory canal, the zone between posterior attachment and the middle of the disc and the anterolateral approach. Once we have externalized the suture with help of needle, we tie both ends very close to the tragal cartilage. We must emphasize two more options. One of them is the for skin surgeon, is the Qi Yang suture, is a double suture, one in the most external part, the other in the most internal part. It is exceptional because uh, Dr. Chan is a very skillful surgeon, and you see uh, he used three approaches two in the most lateral and posterior part of the joint and one endoral in order to practice endoral approach to tie the suture in the endoral approach. But excellent results as regarding the new position of this based on more than 700 arthroscopic sutures. The other option is the arthroscopic technique described by McCain after lateral myotomy and the screw is inserted through the disc into the condyle. I show you quickly. We need an up, we need a, a cannula with a window in the lateral part. This with a trocar in most inferior and lateral part. We touch the condyle, we displace the cannula toward the most lateral part of the uh, uh, joint. We use motorized in order to perform a hole in the lateral part of the condyle, but through the disc. And you see, we put a, a, a pin in the most lateral part, in the lateral part of the condyle, but through the, the disc. And finally, this is uh, the location of the thing. You see, in the MRI, we get different percentage of replacement of the relocation of the disease after different suturing techniques. But we must therefore to be cautious when introducing new operative arthroscopy procedure that at best may provide only marginal benefit over simple lavage and at worst uh, cause more surgical trauma. Patient was referred from another hospital, and you can see severe trauma for multiple punctures for other departments trying the suture internally. Successful surgery for the surgeon is not always successful surgery for the patient. 
Half the temperamental region of horoscopy technique being compared. Review of the literature lacks uh, show that many studies lack clinical diagnosis, lack of uniformity to surgical procedure. Um, moreover, when different surgical techniques were evaluated for the treatment of the same entity, assessment of randomization was lacking. Our paper compares results of lysis and lavage with operative technique. It appears to be useful technique for the treatment of patients with chronic closed lock. No difference was observed with regard to these parameters between arthroscopic lysis and lavage and operative arthroscopy for the treatment of chronic closed lock. Our paper is good, but with shortcomings. The main limitation is uh, retrospective design, the absence of control randomized distribution of patients for each treatment group. For instance, we have no relation, we have no classification, we have no tests for different Wilkes stages. A randomized clinical trial comparing level one to advanced arthroscopy done by the same surgeon is needed to provide definitive evidence on the matter. General overview, license and lavage for everything, the most universal method, electrocoagulation, two or three, suture, two or three of Wilkes. But if you have training, you can perform electrocoagulation or suture in early stages. We move to the subsynovial infiltration, different substances, the first hyaluronic acid. This is, you see in this paper, the uh, meta-analysis, the systematic review of the literature, inconclusive about the conclusions uh, about the benefits of the hyaluronate. Corticosteroids, be careful with the corticosteroid. We received some patients in Spain after uh, arthrosynthesis with corticosteroids, and we can see in some cases degenerative joint disease. The sclerosans for painful hypermobility. We used many, many years ago, specifically ethanolamine, but now we use radio frequency and electrocoagulation. And finally, infiltration of different substances such as opioids. We use in some cases bupivacaine because bupivacaine cause less uh, pain in the 20, uh, in the first 24 hours. This uh, uh, paper compares opioids, bupivacaine, morphine with saline, the best result with the bupivacaine. Growth factors, as you know, is quite important in maxillofacial surgery, in implant surgery, in other modalities of the maxillofacial surgery. But we always complement the other techniques with this tissue infiltration. This study, for instance, showed best result of growth factors in relation comparing with a higher rate. However, this meta-analysis, this systematic review, uh, is controversial in relation with good results of uh, growth factors. No uh, supports for the use of growth factors uh, upon the results of this uh, paper. Uh, you know, the one uh, conclusion is these substances are not a panacea and no overcome your poor techniques, sorry. And no overcome your poor technique. Otherwise, it's not a philosophical stone. Uh, several ideas before finishing the lecture. Arthroscopy of the temporal mandibular joint is minimally invasive procedure that has the potential bridging of the wide gap between the conservative temporal mandibular joint treatment and open surgical arthrotomy. The surgeon interested in temporal mandibular joint surgery, minimally invasive or not, we always have two main issues to face. First issue, as a result, many patients initially presenting to the maxillofacial surgeon for treatment have a prolonged period of non-surgical therapy. Please put limited time for conservative treatment. Second issue, uh, other group of professionals defend the idea that internal derangement is a limited 
and good, it could be solved with the time, only with the time. For this reason, two important papers. Israel is compared to groups. One, less than 10 months after failure in conservative treatment. Second group, more than 10 months after failed conservative treatment. The best result in the early treatment, in the early arthroscopy. This study compares uh, less than one year, more than one year, the same results I mentioned, I mentioned before. Best result, less than one year. Probably because less than one year depends on the inflammatory changes. More than one year depends on the degenerative changes. In other words, it could be more important, proper time to perform arthroscopy that the technique sophisticated or not that we choose. And patients with 23 years, clear indication of surgery, please do it as soon as possible. But the most demonstrative and clear idea could be summarized in this paper. Temporomandibular joint arthroscopy is one part of the treatment is not the treatment, is one part of the treatment. The important thing as other treatments, such as drugs, physiotherapy, or the spleen. Finally, several specialties, medical, non-medical, dental, non-dental, surgical, non-surgical, have approached this entity. We have in front of us a great puzzle. Each of us has a piece to put on this puzzle. The problem is to know how, where, and when we must place our piece. Our piece could be arthrocentesis, arthroscopy, whatever uh, open joint surgery. Uh, thank you very much for your kind attention. Um, thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Dr. Monje, for such a comprehensive description of arthroscopic surgery, minimally invasive arthroscopic surgery. Uh, it has been, uh, there are very few people in our country who are practicing this, and I'm sure that your presentation has inspired many more because you have uh, demystified this uh, procedure for all of us and inspired us to move ahead towards the future with more information and knowledge and an extremely important and significant tool for the treatment of our patients with temporomandibular joint disorder. Thank you so much. Once again, because we have a very less time and uh, an extremely important